chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. That's what I want to look at for our study uh, this evening, uh, this Wednesday evening Bible study. Matter of fact, sent you give rise to, I believe, my going to this text of scripture for uh, our lesson for today. And uh, the Apostle Paul records in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, let me just, I'm going to begin reading the verse 9. I'll read through uh, verse 10, I believe. Uh, yeah, verse 10. I'll, I'll read 10 verses. I hope you all read your Bible today. If you're not, you're getting ready to get a, a reading from the Word of God. It is not expedient, Paul says, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven, and I knew such a man. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such and one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For I, I'm sorry, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest my uh, man should think of me uh, above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure. Here it is, and this is what really where I really want to focus, focus this evening. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the message messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then... Am I strong? <laughs> okay. I want to focus on that scripture where he says it was a, a, the messenger of Satan. I think that's uh, what what verse was that? That, that, that I, just, I just read it. I think it's verse 7. Yeah, verse 7. He said, Though I be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalt, exalted above measure. Okay? Now, what, what I want to talk about the purpose of thorns. That's what I want to talk about just uh, for a few minutes, and I'm not going to belabor the point. Like I say, not hitting on all of them this evening, but if you'll stay with me, I believe we'll be blessed from the exhortation of this word. Okay? We we uh, can be uh, thorny people at times, saying, I just can't take it anymore. That's what we say sometimes when the storms of life come. But Paul is telling us that uh, thorns are a good thing. <laughs> I, know, I know we don't off the cuff agree with that. Off the cuff, we don't agree with that. Uh, Problems, headaches, pains, heartaches, pressures, tribulation, trials. Can't see that. 
particularly at the time we're going through it. We can't see that they are good for us. And so just for a few minutes, a thorn, a thorn in my side. A thorn in my side. And uh, sometimes we look at, feel like we, we've been rolling in fields of thorns. <laughs> uh, that's the way it feels sometimes. And, uh, that, and that's how they come at us sometimes. We get to the point where we say, I just can't take it anymore. Okay? This is too much. But Paul tells us that, but it's really a good thing when we're going through. And he does. I mean, that's, that's, I guess that's why we grow spiritually and mature spiritually when we get to the point where we understand those things that happen to us that are not so good, afflictions that we have that doesn't feel so good, how that they are good for us, as the psalmist say, how that a thorn, uh, God has a purpose for thorns in our lives, okay? And when we get to the point where we really understand that and can be patient while God is working on us, okay, uh, we will be even more blessed when we get to the other side. So Paul, in this text, wants us to understand that we must not identify ourselves by the thorns, okay, no, not to identify ourselves by the thorns, but by Christ who shines th through the thorns. Okay? Now, you know, the Bible said, let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And when we are going through, it's hard to let our light shine. But if we've arrived at the point where we understand that thorns uh, in our side, though they be, you know, they're pricking us and causing us discomfort, if we can understand that God has a purpose for it, then I think that we will really be able to let God shine through our lives and shine through the thorns. And so, context of the passage is Paul is in part defending his actions and rights as an apostle. Now, that's really the context of what uh, this passage is about because there were people who did not believe Paul was uh, an, a genuine apostle. They didn't, you know... They uh, and it was his own uh, 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 fellow, fellow brethren who was feeling this way. His own fellow disciple uh, uh, apostles were feeling that way because they didn't go through things the way they went through them. And so the apostle Paul in this text is somewhat defending his apostleship by his own experiences. Okay. And so he's using uh, his own experiences to teach a lesson. And uh, at the same time, he, he's uh, using his personal experience to help us as he uh, writes and teaches through this passage. So l l listen again to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. And I'm going to use it in a New Living Translation because I think that's a better said, clearer said about what Paul is saying. Uh, this boasting, verse 1, will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about visions and revelation from the Lord. Verse 2, I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside of my body. But I do know that I was caught up to paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words. Things no human is allowed to tell. 
So Paul chooses to reveal an amazing spiritual experience that no one else could match, including uh, his super apostle, apostle brethren, <laughs> okay, who are criticizing him because they didn't go through it the way uh, they went through it, okay? But Paul says on another occasion that, uh, you know, I was, I, was made, I was made an apostle out of due time. I was made an apostle when God chose to make me an apostle. And he starts giving his testimony about being on the road to Damascus and how he was thrown from his beast. A light, a light shined, uh, shone down from heaven and, uh, you know, knocked him off his beast. <laughs> he, he heard a voice, he said, but he never saw anyone. He was left for blind. Paul had it on. Listen, that speaks to uh, some of us about, you know, the way we feel. If it don't happen to us exactly the way it happens to other people, we don't think that they're legitimate or that they are genuine in their relationship with God. God works with people in different ways. Hello. Yes, he does. He don't necessarily have to use a cookie cutter uh, pattern for everybody, okay? Everybody is, doesn't have the same conversion experience, you know? Uh, it doesn't hit everybody the crown of their head and go through the bottom of their feet. No, 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 no. Uh, you, know, you know, my wife and I talk a lot about uh, the different uh, conversion experiences uh, that we had. Hers was totally, totally different <laughs> than mine. But I have no doubt in my mind that uh, she is a child of God. She has a relationship with God. No doubt in my mind. I think she feels the same way about me. But at the same time, our experiences in coming to the Lord and how we developed our relationship with God was totally different. You know, and we cannot be critical of other people because they don't experience it the same way we experience it. Hello, somebody. But anyway... That was the way um, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the rank and file of the apostles were feeling about the apostle Paul. And so the apostle Paul was defending his uh, experience that God gave him uh, to become an apostle. And God gave him some unique experiences, experiences that the other apostles didn't have. And so... It's so easy to respond to criticism and complaints, aggression uh, uh, with trying to make ourselves look better or stronger, something like that. But sometimes we're guilty of the what's called the humble brag. <laughs> you know what the humble brag is. <laughs> sometimes we cloak it up. We're bragging, but we cloak it up so, to, so as not to make make it look like we are bragging, <laughs> okay? Well, the Apostle Paul in this text uh, uh, didn't want to brag about what he had gone through and all the experiences he had. He didn't want to brag about it, but he, at the same time, wanted them to know that uh, he was just as much an apostle, a genuine apostle, as the rest of uh, his fellow Fellow, uh, fellow apostles were. And so uh, th this was an occasion where he was trying to defend uh, defend his apostleship. But there was another one I wanted to I wanted to share with you too uh, that uh, is Paul defending his his apostleship uh, in in the word of God where they accused him, you know, of not being a genuine apostle. Uh, let me see if I can uh, find it right quick. Okay, it's in uh, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And uh, let me see if I can just go right to the verse. Yeah, okay, start at verse 4. Paul says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Now these were some people because they were uh, were 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 uh, a cut above everyone else from a fleshly standpoint, not spiritually, 
You know, it's like, oh, they got two or three degrees. Oh, they know people in the community. Uh, they are society people. You know, they can dress a certain way. Just fleshly stuff, you know, has no spiritual connotation at all. And uh, they were challenging the Apostle Paul. And this is how he responds to them. He says, um, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. <laughs> you know, he said later on, say in my flesh, there's no, nothing good. Don't you be boasting about your flesh, talking about how good you look. Hey, that's going to change. <laughs> I promise you, those looks are going to change. <laughs> All right. You might as well get ready for it because they're going to change. <laughs> My wife showed me a picture the other day when she was a little girl. And she said, look, she said, and I think she was like kindergarten age or something like that. And I turned around and looked at her again. <laughs> and she hollered at me when I, when I, when I started talking about this. But she, she said, why you look at me like that? She, she, she said, you know, you, you can't, it's hard for you to believe that I was a little girl based on where I look today. Uh, that wasn't really, really why I looked at her like that. But I tell you what, it, as the older saints, you say, just keep on living. Just keep on going to bed and getting up. You're going to change. So that flesh, flesh, don't you be boasting about the flesh because that's going to all change. That's all I'm saying. But so Paul says, if any other man thinking that he has, well, he might... Uh, trust in the flesh. He says, I more. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. L listen to him. He could be boasting here, but he's not. He's just trying to make them aware of who he was. He says, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the tribe of Benjamin, he said, I was of the tribe of Benjamin, the elite tribe. He said, I was a Hebrew of the Hebrew uh, as touching the law, I was a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting uh, uh, the church, uh, touching uh, the righteous, which is in the law, blameless. Uh, but what things were gained to me? Listen to what he says. What things were gained to me in the flesh? Where, where, where flesh of the people would think that, oh, oh, that's... That's, that's great stuff. That's great stuff that you have. He said, what would have been gained to me? He said, I, here's what he says. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. I gave it up that I might be closer to Christ. You know, that's why some people can't mature and get closer to Christ and grow in their relationship because they're too focused on the things of the flesh. They are magnifying things of the flesh. They're trying to develop the flesh as opposed to developing the things of the spirit. But Paul said, I count those things but loss. You want to you wanna try to make me feel bad because of fleshly things? No, I gave them up and I'm glad I gave them up because giving them up means I got closer to the Lord. So all I'm saying is fleshly things ain't what you, what we uh, reason them sometimes to be. Even money, it, it, ain't, it ain't, but the Bible said don't be deceived by money because money is deceitful. Well, I'm not going to go down that road, but uh, that's what Paul was saying here. He said, yet doubtless, I count all things for laws, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, for whom I suffer the loss of all things and to count them but dung that I may win Christ. Paul said it ain't nothing but uh, uh, human feces. That's, that's what I count those things in the flesh to be. Yeah, uh, human feces. I think there's another word in the Greek for it, uh, scubalon, <laughs> that's it, scubalon, thank you, Holy Spirit, that's what it is, uh, and so we can't do that, so Paul, Paul was defending himself in that text, 
and he's defending his apostleship in this text. Paul doesn't want to do that. Uh, he, Paul doesn't want to do that and, and explains why he doesn't want to, you know, be boastful about the things that he has accomplished and enjoyed. Uh, he has a tr he has trouble uh, with doing that. And so uh, when, when trouble comes in our lives, we need to understand, oh, well, a bit more specifically, when thorns come to us, when we have experience those things that's prickly and just, you know, hurts us, causes us to have great discomfort, we need to realize that God has a purpose in those things. All right. Second Corinthians 12, 5 through 7. Here's what Paul said. Paul says that uh, that experience is worth, my experience is worth boasting about. But I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I would, I would be no fool in doing so. Because I would be telling the truth. But I, 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 I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. And even though I have received such wonderful revelation, and this is uh, from the New, New Living Translation as well, okay? He says, so uh, uh, wonderful uh, revelation from God. So to keep me from becoming proud, that is, that's the purpose in this thorn in uh, Paul's flesh. I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. I think the King James says uh, to buffet me and keep me from becoming proud. God does some things in our lives sometimes to keep us humble and to keep us in the position and the place where God can use us. Thorns are trouble, uh, are troubles with a purpose. Did you hear me? Thorns are trouble with a purpose. And this puts some of our struggles uh, in context, okay? But not every calamity, not every problem, uh, every thorn in our life, you know, uh, uh, every thorn, uh, every problem, every calamity, every problem in life is a thorn, okay? It's not, uh, okay? God sends thorns specific, specifically and purposefully that he might get glory from our lives. It takes some discernment to figure out when we're being guided or disciplined toward a new purpose by our thorns, okay? Uh, he, and Paul gives us some hints. Paul didn't want to talk about uh, his spiritual highs too much. He didn't want to boast, okay? Uh, and so we, we would ask that question, the question sometimes, what topic do we keep, what topic do we keep coming back to over and over? Um, uh, which may be a point of pride, okay? Some other area in our lives, area of weakness that God is trying to get rid of in our lives. And we continue to go the way we want to go, continuing to ignore the leading of the Holy Spirit, trying to uh, uh, position us and, and put us in a place where God can really use us and get some service out of our life but we don't want to go down that road. We don't want to make the sacrifice. We don't want to, we don't want to uh, uh, really uh, 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 find out why God has allowed the thorn to come in our lives. We don't want to do that because we don't want to go where maybe God wants us to go. But in the end, you always know God does what he knows to be the best for us. And we will uh, agree with God at the conclusion of the day that it was the best thing for us. <clears throat> thorns, thorns. 
spikes, splinters, those things that irritates us, or bothers us constantly. It could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be mental, uh, it could be torture, you know. Uh, and a thorn is something that just constantly jabs at you, pokes at you, continuously aggravates you, okay? But God's goal in the thorn uh, is to reorientate our thinking just the way he did with the Apostle Paul. He was trying to get him to change his mind, to, 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 to think more of the way Christ thought than the way, okay, of the world and the flesh. That's what he was trying to do even with Paul because under the normal circumstances, Paul would have boasted about all that God allowed him to see, being caught up in the heaven, third heaven, okay, uh, uh, and not uh, uh, being able to even talk about that, okay. Hey, that was quite an experience, all right. And so uh, Paul could have gotten lifted up in pride uh, to the extent he, he'd talk about it, all right. And God is trying to deal with us the same way. When we have a thorn, when something keeps jabbing at us and constantly uh, 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 causing us discomfort, God is trying to tell us something. God is trying to talk to, to us, okay? And, and to get us to be and in the position where he wants us to be. This is seemingly a paradox to some extent. The thorns are where we find our greatest strength, Okay? even though we feel that oftentimes it leaves us weak, okay? But uh, true strength, true strength, as the Bible talks about, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 8 through 10, and uh, uh, New, New Living Translation again. Three different times, starting in verse 8, three different times Paul, uh, Paul begged the Lord, to take away the thorn. Three different times. Each time he says, my grace is all you need. Did you hear that? When we're dealing with thorns, those things that uh, uh, yield to us discomfort, constant discomfort, constantly nagging at us, okay? Uh, God says to the apostle Paul, when he had that experience, and I believe he was talking to us too, he says, my grace is all you need. <laughs> Lord have mercy. My grace, Paul says, uh, of God is all you need. Well, he says in the King James, in the King James, he said, my grace is sufficient. But all he was saying is, I'm all you need. <laughs> When you got me, you got everything you need. I wish somebody could get that tonight. When you got God in your life, you got everything that you need. He said, my power works best. I'm, I'm still in verse 9. He says, my power works best in weakness. It is when you're weak that you find out that my grace is sufficient. In other words, you'll never know how powerful God is till you get in a position where you need his power. <laughs> I love this text of scripture. You'll never know how great God is till you need a great God. Uh -huh. You'll never know what a great physician or doctor he is until you sick yourself. Oh, you can talk about other people, you know, how they were healed and all that kind of stuff. But I'm talking about a personal experience where you need uh, a, a God as a doctor in your life, on your sick bed, doctors turn their head and walk away, all that kind of stuff, and God raise you up. Oh, my goodness. You'll know personally you'll be able to testify that God's grace is sufficient. He says, so now I'm, I'm glad to boast about my weakness. <laughs> I'm glad to experience some weaknesses. 
I'm glad to go through some stuff. When God revealed to Paul what this thorn was about, and I hope you're getting some understanding too, uh, if you don't have it already, uh, I hope you'll uh, understand. Paul says, uh, I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. Lord have mercy. Oh my. Somebody dealing with a thorn right now. You're dealing with a thorn. You just need to hear the word of God. You need to hear this text of scripture right now. All right. Verse 10 says, uh, therefore, or King James said therefore, but New Living Translation said, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. He said, I'm going to take pleasure in it. I'm going to rejoice when I go through these things. When they are for Christ's sake, he says, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Lord, have mercy. When I'm weak, then am I strong. Now, I sit down here this evening to do this Bible study. And I told you this has been kind of a challenging week so far. And uh, had a fall and, you know, got some soreness in, in some places. I had to do a double funeral this morning. You know, a, double, a, a funeral is taxing uh, anyway. But a double funeral is just a little bit more taxing. But listen, through it all, through it all, God was with me. And here I am now. I done forgot all about my weakness, got a, forgot about how tired I was, forgot about my fall, forgot about my feet hurting, <laughs> forgot about my foot hurting, forgot, forgot all that stuff because I'm caught up, caught up in, in God right now, okay? When I'm weak, Paul said, then am I strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, Paul, Paul prayed three times. He prayed fervently three times uh, for this thorn to go away because he, he was just like us. He wanted to get rid of it. And eventually he got the concept that the thorn's, thorn's purpose was uh, and, and that it was to cause him to quit relying on himself and fully depending on Christ's power. <laughs> Somebody hear me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me to say that. So somebody will hear, hear you, hear your voice tonight. Hear your voice tonight, okay? So that they'll understand that they don't need to rely upon themselves, but they need to depend upon the power of Christ in their life. If you got Jesus, if you got the Holy Ghost, you got some po power. Did you hear me? You got you got some power. <laughs> I just had to say that. You got some power. <laughs> you got some power in your life if you've got the Holy Ghost in your life. And you've got something you can depend on. You can take it to the bank. Hallelujah. Because he promised he would never leave us. Okay, so he's there. He, he, he said, I prayed three times. And I prayed fervently and asked God to remove the storm. Okay. But God said, no. Uh, Paul. I need to teach you to stop relying on yourself, all right, and to uh, rely on Christ's power. Mark chapter 8, verse 35 says, if you try to hang uh, on to your life, you will lose it. Okay, and this, this is New, New Living Translation. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of, of the good news, you will save it. Let me see if I can say it the way the King James said. King James said, he that uh, loses his life for my sake shall find it, okay? If you, if you have to uh, give up something because of Christ and you feel like it cost you something because of what you had to give up, okay? Uh, Paul said, no, no, you will find out that what, you, what you're going to receive is greater than what you had to give up. 
I wish I could say that. Yeah. What you, you will never give more to God than God will give back to you. You better hear me. You will never give more to God than God will give back to you. God's shovel is bigger than your shovel. <laughs> you shovel it in, and he shovels it back. All right? So, 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 uh, uh, don't worry about giving up anything or suffering for Christ's sake. Uh, it's going to be worth your while. So Paul's mind and purpose were uh, reoriented toward maturing in Christ in everything he did. Weaknesses, uh, frailty. Uh, okay, he, he felt like he, he could rest in Jesus and his grace and his power. Okay. In other words, he felt like Jesus was sheltering him no matter what he had to go through. Amen. Uh, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, uh, I wanted to uh, share this with you. He said, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Now, this is this is about Christ and in the mind of Christ and the way Christ uh, thought about, would think about a thorn, okay, in his side. He says, um, uh, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. In other words, he was sitting at the right hand of the Father before he came down here, and he didn't feel it was something he, he needed to cling to, okay, at the time, because the need on earth and the need to save us and to deliver us was greater than the comfort he had uh, by his uh, father. And so uh, verse 7 says, Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human, uh, in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. And therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor, gave him a name which is above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue uh, declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so Paul wanted the glory of Christ who gave up all power, all power. He gave it up, gave up, and 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 gave it up, and and strength just to save us, to shine through every word and deed of his life. He expected to be victorious, just as Christ was victorious, and so we can, and must do the same thing. We can be victorious too. Okay, Jesus gave it. Jesus gave up all. Okay, he could have stayed in heaven and boasted about his being the son of God and all that he had been seated by the Father, but he gave it up. He gave it up just to come to this earth and to uh, deliver us from the power of sin, Satan, and self. He gave it up just for our deliverance. Yes, he did. And did he ever have a thorn in his side? Yes, he did. Because they put a, a spear in his side. Blood came out. Put crown of thorns on his head. Blood ran down. Put a spike in his feet. Blood ran down. Put nails in his hand. Blood ran down. Oh, uh, precious is that flow. <laughs> that makes me whiter than snow. No other fountain I know is nothing but the blood of Jesus. He gave his life's blood that you and I might be delivered and have victory in this life. He wanted us to have the same victory that he has, okay? And yes, did he, did he give, it up, give up uh, 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 some great uh, uh, experiences? Did he give up some great blessings? Yes, he did. He gave it up. But what more did he receive from what he gave up? I heard the word say the father gave him a name which was above every name. <laughs> the, 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess. God put it all in his son's hand. And that's why we got to have the son before we leave this world if we're going to go back to be with him when he comes. Okay, I, I really didn't intend to go this long, y'all, but I did. So I hope it's been a blessing or a help to somebody. <laughs>